Okay, today we're gonna go over how to draw the Triceratops body. I did a video beforehand on drawing the Triceratops head, but now we're gonna go over the whole body. This is for beginners, and I'm gonna go through it step by step. Should be simple, easy, if you're a beginner, perfect. If you love dinosaurs, because I'm on a big dinosaur kick right now, you're gonna love this uh, as well. Uh, suggest other dinosaurs you want me to draw tutorials of, and I will totally do it. And that's kind of it. Let's just kind of jump straight into it. Okay, so let's go over the simple shapes first. I'm gonna draw kind of a rectangular shape kind of a box that flares up for the head. Put down the neck here. Actually a little bit lower. I'm gonna draw the sweep of the body. And I'm gonna try to make it right here at the edge of the paper. I'm gonna try to make it so it doesn't go off. down right here. It's gonna be this front legs. So there's a debate whether Triceratops was standing like uh, with his legs, with his elbows wide out to the, uh, with his elbows out to the side, or if he was like in a, just straight up like a cow position. But I think he was more like a cow. Um, but you know, that's, maybe they'll change that. Simple blocky shapes to create that. Going down for the lower part of his body. And then finding his hind legs. I'm gonna put his hind leg right here, just kind of a sweep. Putting it down to the ground. Finding the hind leg over here on the far side, and then finding the far leg on the far side on the front. Again, just really simplistic shapes. And completing over here for the tail. I'm gonna sweep the tail up, and I'm gonna cheat it a little bit, because I want it to stay on the page. I don't think he would have done that with his tail, but I'm gonna sweep it up just to kind of keep it in the page, it's a cheat. Uh, as far as tools are, are concerned, I didn't really talk about it, but I'm using this 5B graphite pencil, and I'm using this needy eraser for now. And I'll talk about the pens as I bring them in. So let me go into the face more. Triceratops had three horns, right? Tri, T-R-I, front horn, and then two horns above the eyes, right above the eyes. Put a circle shape right here to find, to just kind of to place the eye. And I'm gonna have him turning a little bit toward us. And I want him to turn a little bit toward us because I want some dimension in this. I don't want just a flat side view. And he had a beak at the front. Triceratops had a beak. Going in, bottom part of the beak. Pulling to the back of the jaw. And I'm gonna find this cylindrical uh, crest he had. It goes round. I think it was like a piece of paper almost, like folding. Uh, but it's got more like a crown. I'm just gonna find the general shape of that. It's round, kind of wrapping around the backside. I'm gonna go over here to the body. Uh, I'm gonna find a little bit more structure in the body. And this is, this is just preliminary. I'm gonna go into the uh, 
you know, inking in a bit here. Front bicep. Although, they didn't really, animals on all fours don't really have that much. I mean, they really never use the bicep. Pulling down here, elbow, and then the front kind of uh, front foot or hoof. I'm not really sure. Not really a hoof, but the front foot. Put three at the front. I believe you have like a thumb back there as well. Or a dew claw, I can't really quite. I think like more of like a dew claw. And then the back. Hind leg. Same. It's foot and claw. And I'm just putting this as a placeholder for the most part. Pulling up. the knee here and I will I throw it out here for the lat I'll throw this shape the latissimus dorsi in the back and then where this kind of merges in there we'll go more into that in the ink so I'm gonna go over the ink I'm gonna use the Faber Castell PITT artist pen that is uh, there's different sizes of them but you can use whatever you want to ink you can use Pigma Pigma are these, these uh, microns. Uh, use any form of ink that you want. It's a fountain pen. I'm going here with a really thin one. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to go in and I want to just kind of find my line art. And uh, so, for example, I found the darks within the uh, kind of shadow pattern here. Or uh, just kind of placeholders. So I'm going to, right now I'm going to do the things closest to us. the front horn and the horns a lot of them prong forward not always but I'm gonna kind of give it a curvature go forward pull that out to make it a little bit bigger gonna go into the eye Eyes right below the horns, so I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm going to go over here and find the far side horn as well. The far side brow, it's going to make a little bit of a bump on the far side, but it's not actually going to, uh, you're not going to see the eye. Because he was more of an herbivore, a lot of his eyes are, you know, more facing the side. It's kind of like the side front. Pulling down into that front horn. And if you want, you can angle that straight or back. Pulling down right here into that beak. What we're trying to do is try to get placement kind of down with this initial line art. I'm not trying to go for the finish yet, although this will be my framework for the finish. Pulling down right here so you can kind of see into the mouth a little bit. I'm going to even darken that a little bit. So it's not going to be totally flat. You can see kind of into the mouth. Shade that black. Pulling in. Going to pull back here. Pulling down. So, Triceratops had almost like a bit of a, almost a, sometimes a spike, you see. Almost the size cheekbone was so 
you know, uh, intense. So sometimes it would almost create another spike in itself, but it wasn't really a spike. It was just like a really big um, zygomatic arch. I'm not sure what you call it on lizards, uh, or on lizards on, you know, dinosaurs. It might be called a jugo bone, but it has very, sticks out a lot. Pulling in here. Going to the far side. And I'm going to give kind of that spiked, uh, has like kind of these stubs at the end of it, but there's very, very small spikes along the edge of that crest. Right here at the bottom of the neck. There's gonna be a little bit of a hanging there because uh, when they eat, they kinda, you know, have to have an esophagus to put it through. Pulling it down. Kind of the pit of, you know, kind of the chest there. That's gonna roll into the top of the arm. Essentially, it's their deltoid area. Pulling down into that arm, where the crick of the arm, where, where it bends. And that's gonna pull down into the front of the bottom of the foot. And let's find the other side first. Back of the elbow. Back of the arm. Arm kind of melds into the rest of the body. You want it to merge in there. Uh, give him a little bit of a uh, kind of a uh, deltoid shape right here, but we'll, we'll go over that in the next step. Going down into the foot again. And spikes around the front. Bit of a dewclaw on the other side, but we're not going to put that here. Something like a dewclaw. It's not quite high enough to be a dewclaw, actually. I'm just going to say that. Again, I'm not putting too much detail in here. I think right now I'm just gonna kind of put in the bare essentials. Pulling up. Now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the other side. I'm gonna pull from the far end. It's gonna pull into the chest, into the stomach area. And the pelvis, if you ever look at him, uh, bones of the triceratops, the pelvis, the pelvis and the uh, kind of rib cage are so close together. Um, gonna go right here to the back. Going in. And right here, I'm going to go toward this end, and I'm going to find the front leg first. Back foot, hind leg, down. And then right there, claws in the exact same fashion. Big kind of stumpy claws. Hind leg, very similar to other animals where they stand on their tiptoes. And that's gonna pull in here. Into the tail, into our tail. We're gonna have it up like so. Not too much of a crank because it probably couldn't have moved its tail that much. And then I'm gonna try to make it look like the underbody sweeps in to that side. So let's go to the far side. I'm gonna find the far side back foot. Pulling in. 
and pulling back over here. So now we kind of have something going on. We have our framework. Uh, let it dry for a little bit and then afterward uh, erase the kind of uh, pencil lines that we got, if you have that. Uh, I am going to use a kneaded eraser, like I said before. I'm going to erase a lot of this excess construction lines. If you guys have any other dinosaurs you want me to draw, please go uh, write them in the description right now. Also, I'm going to take this moment while I'm erasing to talk about Skillshare. I have talked about Skillshare before in other videos. Skillshare is essentially where I have my entire programs. Uh, it is one spot I have my entire programs. But Skillshare is this awesome site. Essentially, it's like YouTube, but it is a more curated version of YouTube, and it's a little bit, it's higher quality, it just is. So let me kind of say what I mean. Uh, on here, I have a video on how to draw an eye. It's a single video, a few minutes long, but on Skillshare, I have a course on how to draw the eye. And what that does, it's, it's seven videos really hyper-focused on teaching you every aspect of drawing the eye. And that is kind of the stuff that's on there. It, there's courses on topics to really give you enough information and the quality is very high. They delete programs they think are not quality. They will go through and delete them. Um, so their quality control is very high. And I have nine programs on there right now. So the thing about this uh, entire, it's an entire creative site. It's very similar to YouTube. So there's stuff like, you know, uh, guitar, you can learn you can learn quilting, you can learn painting, uh, like everything, uh, uh, not just drawing and tons of drawing. Uh, so the cool part is uh, that is normally $30 a month. That's kind of the price of Skillshare. But if you join, because you saw this video, because you're hearing this right now, uh, you can have Skillshare for free for two entire months. Essentially, because you're watching this video and you know, like through me, I give you this code and it's gonna be the top of the description. It's gonna be the very, very first code, right? The top of the description. And that will give you free Skillshare for two months. And you can watch all, everything on Skillshare. So you can watch every program I have. I have nine programs on there. You can watch them all. And two months is plenty of time. Uh, it's a great way to pick up a new hobby as well if you need that. If you just want to up your drawing skills, I honestly recommend that. Um, and that this is your chance to do that. So it's free. And at the very end of the two months, you can cancel. Or I think you can even like deactivate or re, uh, you know, like reactivate. What do you say? Like a renewal notice. You can deactivate that almost immediately, I think. And um, you just have it for free the entire time. If you like the whole site, you can stay there. If not... They're not, it's no questions asked. It's just deleted. It's just, you, you just don't go back. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, very easy. Check out that first description. Uh, it's an amazing site. I've been using it for uh, a little bit now. I think I just started a month ago, but it's, it's amazing the stuff you can find on there. It's like this whole other universe that, um, you know, I guess is at a pay barrier. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit annoyed at like paying for stuff, but the fact that it's two months free is amazing. All right, that's a, uh, enough of that. Let's go into kind of uh, a little bit more of the drawing. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by finding the darks before I go into the detail. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm gonna pick one of these other ones. Uh, I'm gonna pick a thicker one. Let me see. All right. There we go, there's a brush pen essentially of the Faber-Castell, or just a thicker, it's just a thicker marker. You can do also a Sharpie if you want. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the darks. And the darks, the lighting is going to be coming from above down. <coughs> so I'm going to go back here. This is casting a bit of a cast shadow on the neck. So I'm going to put that down. What kind of shape would that make on the neck? Just the bottom of the neck, also from the jaw. The jaw itself is going to cast a shadow down. So I'm gonna kind of put that down there. I'm just drawing, I'm doing it very geometrically. I'm gonna leave a little bit of light here to show, you know, this arm going up in there. Back of the elbow, a little bit. Right here, this isn't directly below it. Just to show off the form. I'm gonna have that there. 
I'm gonna leave a little line right there so that the elbow line shows. Pulling down. And, you know, I'm just gonna cover this part right here. Thinking about the roundness of the stomach, and there is, uh, you know, you know, there, there's, a, there's a, it's not just a round stomach, there's variation in that. Pulling it a little bit more, and then pulling it over here on the other side to kind of match that. All right, now I'm gonna go right here to the knee. Pulling a line here. Also pulling it down. It's a little bit like it's under, but it's gonna have some variation to it. And then the far, way at the far end. What you could do is you could entirely cover these in shadow in the back, um, or you can just put some shadow and leave it open on both ends to kind of show that there is variation within the lighting and it's just gonna show off more information. So I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm just gonna put some value on this object here. Yeah, and I'll finesse that a little bit more with uh, you know, when I go back across it again. So you wanna throw a little bit of folds here. I'm gonna throw that with this. The folding is to, you know, kind of uh, attach it together, like the limbs are attaching to each other. And usually the folds are coming from the legs, uh, right here with a stomach, different part of the stomach rolling in, maybe muscular portion. Uh, right here at the, uh, I was talking about Not too far up, but the lats. Back of the deltoid here, but I don't want that to make it too, I don't want to separate it too much, so I'm gonna have to adjust that. Let's even pull a thicker line at the front here. some lines at the top, and now we're getting more into this detail section. All right, and then uh, over here, the cheekbone. Front, the horns, and then you can also do that a little bit in front of the, so now we're getting more into detail. Let's go into the kind of detail section and we'll go back and forth here. Going over here to the feet. Just trying to lay down ma masses of, of uh, dark. So let's go over with a smaller, back to a smaller pen. It's too small. I want some a little bit bigger. So usually these come in sets. Nah, it's too big. Let me get a smaller one. This is pretty decent. Uh, I'm just gonna show the attachment right here, the skin over the beak. They tend to do that a lot. The horn can be integrated into the skin if you want, or it could be a separate uh, piece. I am going to, I guess I'll, I'll make it, 
a little bit more. Uh, I guess I'll make it a separate piece. And then I'm gonna throw a nostril right next to the horn here. You need to breathe, right? Going in. Into the eye. Merging that value from the horn into the face a little bit. Separating those tiny little, I guess, horns you may call it, triangles at the top of the crest. And what I'm going to do is, you could see that the skin would uh, kind of conform to that crest a little bit. So I'm going to try to draw those striations uh, kind of in the change of form, to, just to show the change of form, and you're indicating it. So let's go on a little bit more detail, smaller detail into the face. I'm going to put in small lines right here. I'm going to throw in a little bit of kind of bag of the eye. And I'm going to make this connect to the face more. Right here, bottom of the beak, throw a little bit of shadow here. Light source coming from above, and that's going to carry over a little bit to the skin. And the beak, you would think, would be a bit, a bit of a different material than the skin itself, so it's going to have a little bit more shine to it, so I'm going to throw some lines over here, kind of trying to give it an, uh, some, some form of different, uh, like it's made of something different than the skin. Sorry, my computer is making those weird noises. Refine the, the shadow pattern a little bit. Going back into the horns. Uh, going here to the front horn, putting a little bit, a few more lines. They're directional lines to create the illusion of form, so you can see the shape, like what shape is this making. A little bit empty over here, I might throw something in here to fill that space. Going back to the neck area, and go into the shoulder area, I think it needs, it needs some shoulders. A little bit, kind of, there we go, that looks much better. And since these lines are all on top, um, there's not going to be, I'm not going into value as heavy. I'm not putting as much emphasis at the top because there's less lines going on. I'm throwing these small lines again. Small little lines. And they're, again, they're just indicating shape. Like what shape is this making? Indicating form. Maybe spinal column sticking out there. Well, not a spinal column, but the muscles on the spinal column. Back of the leg over here. Think of the muscles that would be like on a horse or on a rhino. Throwing smaller lines in certain areas. The lines create kind of texture. And when you throw in smaller lines, um, I don't know what it is, but it, it just creates this illusion of complexity uh, within your drawing. I guess it is more complex at that point. And it just makes the kind of the larger, darker areas look much better when you throw these smaller lines. So if you were to go back to the process of what we've been doing, we're putting, uh, you know, the pencil for the structure, right? For the, um, the, uh, the um, proportion for the proportion to be pencil. 
then uh, we're going over um, getting our line arts, kind of like keep it there, what is our framework. And then after that, we're putting in the darks with a larger, uh, darker, uh, I guess, brush, you can say, or just a larger pen. And then after that, we are going in with a smaller pen for refining details. And it's really just that. You're building upon and then building upon more of what you did already. Like you're going, you're building your stuff, your drawing, you're building that in stages. And it's all coming out of you, it's just coming at different times. You don't have to draw all at once. You could, if you want, but I highly recommend you don't, um, unless you're already in drawing for like, you know, 30 years and stuff like that, or just really, really good. You can do that. There's people like, I think Kim Jung-gi, who's an artist that does that. You just draw stuff like starting here. But what happens is if you just start into the details, it's very possible it will completely run out of the page or your placement will be completely incorrect. That happens all the time. I've been drawing for about 15 years and I still do it this way to keep it uh, into in the process. Let's go back to the hind leg over here. I'm kind of ignoring it. We're almost at the end, don't worry about it. If you stuck around this long, thank you so much. Uh, if you stuck around this long, I want you to do me a favor, write your favorite dinosaur in the comments. You might've already written which other dinosaur you want me to draw, but write your favorite dinosaur. What is your favorite dinosaur? I can tell you my favorite dinosaur. My favorite dinosaur is the Carnotaurus. And the Carnotaurus, they just had it in um, the Jurassic World movie in uh, Jurassic World, uh, was it Lost Kingdom, right? Fallen Kingdom. And they had it in there. He was like the other T-Rex looking thing. That the T-Rex essentially, I think the T-Rex killed him, I think, when, when the T-Rex entered the scene, uh, entered the movie, I think. And uh, that is my favorite dinosaur. I just think it looks so weird. It is another theropod, and I just think it looks so cool. And you can add to this as much as you want. You can throw, these small lines right here as light cross hatching. And you could keep going on this uh, almost indefinitely. It's kind of up to you. But we are gonna end it pretty much, pretty much right there. Um, what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna throw cast shadow on here with that brush, uh, a thicker pen right there, the brush pen. I'm gonna just throw a, I'm gonna throw a cast shadow here and that's gonna be to ground this character. Just to ground him. I don't really have a name for him. I don't want to go up right against the edges because it might, not all edges at least, because it might completely uh, muddy up the actual drawing or the actual uh, inking per se, actual art. So I'm gonna try to leave a space between his feet, for example and the uh, cast shadow. Pull one back here as well, a little bit, just to get thinner. And what I might do is I'm gonna give a little bit of a thicker uh, contour to most of him. So the contour is the outermost edge. Ooh, what is it? Okay, I gotta be careful. If the ink hasn't dried, since I'm anchoring my uh, hand right here, if I, you know, because I just put down a bunch of fresh ink, it might come off. So I have to be very weary of that. I should have let it dry. The only reason I'm not letting it dry is because this is a demonstration. Let me put my armor on here to get a better. Feel free to. I'm only doing this again because this is a demonstration, uh, but normally I would turn the paper, but right now I'm having to turn my arm. But don't be afraid to turn the paper. Uh, don't give yourself unneeded resistance. There you go. Pulling in. Thickening some lines.
And I'm gonna go right here. This top line is gonna be hard because I'm not gonna turn the paper. Oof. Gotta be careful because this is a brush. I don't wanna sink down too hard on it. I just wanna thicken the line a little bit more. I think it's a little bit too thick here, but it, it will pass. so much easier with like a sharpie or something because you know you don't you, it doesn't matter how hard you press it the line will be too much thicker all right just kind of straightening out the back here with the front i might not even strengthen those lines too much because they're in the back it might be better it'll fall back you know as far as vision goes and that's about it Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you watching. Uh, like I said, if you like this video, if you want more dinosaurs, comment. If you watch this far, I am amazed. Um, you are awesome. Uh, please, uh, you know, share the video, uh, leave a like, post it anywhere, post it like me on dinosaur websites. Uh, I want to draw more dinosaurs. If you want to see more of those, let me know. Let's bring in some added details at the very end. But thank you, guys. I will see you in the next video.